An idol is anything that you worship. An idol is anything that you give your strength to, that you give your affection and your attention to. It's what you yield yourself to as the priority and the precedence in your life. Now, I know we all say that we love God and we put him first, but our, our fruits, our actions show the, the real priority of our life. And so sometimes we can get things jumbled. We can get them mixed up. I understand that most of us don't have shrines in our homes or in our offices, but that does not eliminate the possibility that we have erected idols in our life. Do you realize that you can worship someone or something by simply paying too much attention to it? But honestly, idolatry, it takes precedent over everything. It takes precedent over spiritual health. It takes precedent over, I mean, you, you name it. it, it just rules it. It rules it, it rules your wallet, it rules your life, it rules your weekends, it rules your... Huh. Now, here's why it's so devastating. When idolatry rules the heart of men, they do not in the end want an all-knowing, all-loving, omnipotent God of the universe who gives as he sees fit. They want instead a divine waitress to fetch them their want. So, why don't men yearn for the Lord? Why don't men pursue him? Why don't men and women cling to his feet? I have to wonder if the reason so few of us do is the reason that we have an idol in our hearts and our fear is that if we draw near to him, he will address this thing and it is a non-negotiable for us. And so then what we do, and the good thing about it, hey, the good thing about this is we're in the Bible Belt and so you can just go to church and pretend all the days of your life. So that's great news. All you have to do is learn when to raise your hand, what part of the song. You got to join a Bible study or a small group. That's all you got to do. And you're in. And that's how idolatry happens. And it's the reason we stay away from the Lord. Because we're afraid if we press into him, he's going to address this thing. And we don't want that. Because in the end, we value it more than we value him. And we think in the end that this is more beautiful and more necessary. So a person can be an idol in your life. If you spend your life trying to impress that person, trying to win their love, their attention, their affection, more than you try to impress God, more than you want to win the love of God or give your attention and your affection to God. It's not wrong to have people in our life. In fact, we need people. God made us for covenant. He made us for connection. But when a person becomes our priority over God, then we get into an ungodly soul tie because you're putting pressure on them that they're try you're trying to get something out of them that they're not even capable of giving to you it becomes an idol when you allow someone's opinion to determine your value when you allow their perception to determine and validate who you are that's where you begin to open the door to living for someone else depending on them for your source instead of depending on God to be your source and so what happens when you allow other people to validate you when you allow what you do or what you have or a relationship that you're in and I'm not talking about just in the context of marriage it can be a pastor sheep relationship it can be friend relationship it can be a worker a, a, a boss relationship it can be all different contexts it can be marriage it can be every every different type of situation but when you allow man's opinion to validate you and give you your value over what God says then it becomes an ungodly soul tie and it becomes an idol because you're looking to them for the source of life instead of looking to the one who is your source of life and so by you Yielding your strength by yielding your affection and all of us have probably fallen prey all of us have become vulnerable in these areas but when I yield myself to that that becomes an idol in my life it's an idol and while we need and we desire people in our life nothing should take priority over God's presence and while it's good to have relationships while it's good to have things that are going to complement us God says I am going to be your source of life I'm going to 
be your life giver. Because if not, watch what happens when you get entangled in a relationship and you get enmeshed in one, then, then their ups and downs become your ups and downs. So when they're high, you're high. When they're low, you're low. So you, you're caught in this whirlwind of craziness and confusion because when the enemy wants to mess up your destiny, he robs you of your spiritual identity. So you find the essence of who you are wrapped up in things, wrapped up in people, but the devil is a liar. You are not what you went through and you are not what other people say about you. You are who God says you are. You can do what God says you can do. Grace. Therefore, it says God opposes the proud. God opposes the proud. God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. The, the other side, the other reason, this other piece of idolatry, this other reason why I believe men and women don't fully pursue and passionately chase the, the creator of all things is this idea or this thing, pride. And, and I would define it just simply as self-exaltation, thinking more highly of yourself than you should. And here's how it plays out among the evangelical community. All right, here's how it plays itself out. In the end, we believe that we're smart enough, wise enough, clever enough, and good enough. So we view ourselves not in desperate need of grace and the things of God, but rather a tool in the hands of God to correct and help others. <laughs> That's how it is. It's how it plays out. How it plays out. I have no idea how God doesn't rain down fire. Because here's the lesson. Let me bring this full circle. Where, where are we going with all of this? It, it's simply this challenge. The sooner you can identify those things in your life that might be creeping up to idol status, the sooner you can identify those things and deal with it, the better off you're going to be. God's warning is stop wasting your life chasing after this false idol that will never ultimately satisfy don't waste your best years of energy and passion and resources pursuing this thing that will only let you down. There's only one thing that is worthy of pursuing, and that is God. Because only God will ultimately fulfill and satisfy. Idol worship is dangerous. Worshiping idols is very spiritually dangerous. It's dangerous, one, because it's offensive to God. Now, I would hope that that in and of itself would just be enough. I don't want to offend God. If you don't believe it, remember the Ten Commandments? Kind of a big deal in the Bible. Remember the first two of the Ten Commandments are all about idols. It's God saying, don't do this. So it's kind of a big deal to God. And why is that? Why is God so offended by idols? Why does he want us to avoid idolatry so much? It's because God knows this, that he alone is the one true God who is only the one who is worthy of worship. And he also knows this, that he's trying to protect us because when we get caught up in worshiping false little gods, when we get caught up in worshiping idols, it hurts us. It causes us to be stuck in this endless cycle of searching after satisfaction and joy and peace and hope in these things that will never ultimately give it to us. And God doesn't want us that. He wants us to have life to the full. And he knows that as long as we are chasing after the idols, we are never going to experience it. Often when we think about idols, we think of those bad things in life. We think of things that are sort of overtly sinful. I don't want to have an idol. So maybe it's some sort of a, a chemical or substance abuse. And you say, yeah, that's an idol. You shouldn't have that addiction in your life. Or maybe it's some sort of sexual sin or immorality or pornography or something like that. And you say, yeah, that's, that's an idol. You don't want to have that in your life. Or maybe it's something like, like this drive for, for power or status or money or greed. These things we see as kind of negative. And we say, yeah, don't, don't bow down to those idols. And that's all true. Those are definitely idols, and we should not bow down to those things. But those aren't the only kind of idols in this world and in our lives. And in fact, what we're talking about today is how there are many seemingly good things that can become idols. You see, anything, no matter what it looks like, because there are a lot of good things that, that seem good on the surface, 
and they might be in and of themselves kind of a good thing, but if they start to creep up and take a higher place in our life than God, well then that thing is an idol. Anytime something that is a good thing becomes the ultimate thing, well that is an idol. Uh, unbelievably serious. It starts out in, in our culture and the way it works with us to be unbelievably innocent, but in the end, overwhelmingly destructive. And let me explain to you how it happens. Idolatry in your heart and in my heart starts with a desire. And the desire isn't inherently wicked or wrong. All right? Uh, we have a desire to, to have a nice house. We have a desire to drive a nice car. We have a desire to have a, a, a relatively in shape body. <laughs> I was very careful there. Uh, we have a desire for our kids to excel in athletics because what will our legacy be if they're not a professional athlete? Christ save us. Now, uh, we have a desire that we have money in the bank. We have a desire that we're safe. We have a desire that things are, in most ways, easy for us. We have a desire that our kids get a good education. We have a desire. And those things, there is nothing wrong with any of those things. Nothing. It is not wrong to want a nice house. It is not wrong nor sinful. It is not wrong nor sinful to want your kids to be safe. I mean, come on. It is not wrong or sinful to want a little cash. I want some cash. It's not wrong and sinful to want things to be relatively easy. It's not wrong or sinful. None of the, it's not wrong or sinful to be in shape or want to look good. It's not wrong or sinful. It's just not. It starts with a desire. Like think of it, this thing in the palm of our hands. It starts as a simple desire. And then over time, the hand begins to close. And we say, this is no longer negotiable. And then all of a sudden, the nice house, it's non-negotiable. The, the nice car, it's non-negotiable. Uh, safety, it's non-negotiable. Our kids' athletic career, non-negotiable. Money in the, in the pocket, in the bank, non-negotiable. And now you have the birthing of an idol. And what ends up happening is, is we say, God, do whatever you want. God, be who you are, but don't touch this. Don't, don't touch this. Don't touch work, because in work I find achievement and I find self-value. So I'll do whatever you say, but I'm not quitting this job. Uh, don't don't risk my kids. Do whatever you want, but don't I, I don't I want my kids to be safe. Do whatever you want, but I want my neighborhood to be safe. Do whatever you want, but I want. And what ends up happening is that hand closes and we say, this is no longer negotiable. It's no longer negotiable. And an idol has been born. Now, here's what happens. Here's why it's so devastating. What happens in that moment is you've given an unbelievable amount of authority to whatever that desire is. So much authority have you given to this desire that people and things become a means to this end. So what I would say is that if, if work is your idol, then all of a sudden people at work are viewed by you and thought of by you, whether you like it or not, as a means to your progression up the ladder.